Hello, everyone. It is Friday, November twenty fifth, and as you can see, I have this advent calendar here. Um, I got a thirty one days of Disney villains advent calendar from Fangirl Fibers in October, and I had purchased it with the intent of opening it for Christmas. However, because it is a 31-day advent calendar, um, I kind of need to start early. So I'm going to open up one of these little packs every day up until Christmas. And so there is a little mini skein inside. For those of you who are not part of the knitting or crafty uh, community, we are um, able to purchase these types of yarn advent calendars for Christmas time and recently people have been offering them for Halloween as well and then there's like summer ones and different things and they all have different themes and they usually come with some goodies this one did come with some goodies which I will share with you tomorrow when I film my normal diary entry for the week but from here from today you're going to see a little clip of me opening one of these bags every day up until Christmas. So that is going to be part of my Vlogmas content. And yeah, so I'm really excited. Obviously, this uh, advent calendar is themed to Disney villains. So all of the colorways should be, um, or I would think they would be named a Disney villain. And then the color way is probably going to remind you of that villain. Um, so yeah, super excited. So let's get started. This is October 1st, <laughs> which is actually today, November 25th. So let's open this up. I am doing handheld cam, so it might be a little shaky, uh, but to minimize on the crinkling, I'm going to fast forward this part and I'll be back with you once I get the skein out. So the skein is caught on the uh, tape here. Let me, there we go. Okay, so it comes with a little card like this. And this one says the Evil Queen, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves from 1937. Um, there's nothing on the back. And then this is the skein. So it is a, like a dark gray, highlighter yellow with some red specks in there and orange that might actually be just like a dark orange um i'm trying to look past the viewfinder uh, this is really cool i think this is gonna micro stripe a little bit i think anyway so Yes, I'm very pleased with that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be doing with these Advent Minis yet. Um, I haven't actually knit up any of the Advent Minis that I have gotten for other Advent calendars you may have seen in previous Vlogmases. Um, but I do intend on working on one of them this year. We'll see if I can keep up. But yeah, that's day one. And so tomorrow when I'm back with you face to face, um, I'll open up day two with you. And I'll go through all of the little extras that I got. So more of this content for the rest of Vlogmas. And yeah, I hope you're looking forward to it. I'm really excited for this Advent yarn um, calendar. And yeah, so like I said, I'll be back with you tomorrow. I hope you guys all had an amazing Thanksgiving or whatever you did. I hope you had some great food <laughs> and had a great time. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of November 20th through the 26th. Is that right? I think so. <laughs> today is November 26th. So you probably saw a little clip um, before this of my yarn advent calendar. So I did purchase that advent calendar in preparation to 
open during December. So why don't we start there? Um, I do have some reading to talk to you about. I finished a couple things. I'm in the middle of a couple things. I've got a little bit of knitting. I've got some yarn acquisitions. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. We'll start off with the advent calendar. So this is October 2nd, but <laughs> it's the second day of the advent calendar opening. This is the 31 Days of Disney Villains by Fangirl Fibers. So I'm going to fast forward the crinkling and I'll share with you what the skein is. So the, oh, the villain is Honest John from Pinocchio, 1940. Pinocchio is not one of my favorite <laughs> films, so I didn't even know what this guy was called. I think I've only seen Pinocchio twice, maybe, in my lifetime. So, yes, Honest John. And the skein. Ooh, that is nice. It's got some greens and blues and browns. That is really pretty. I don't think just based on these two that I've opened that this is going to be one that I'm going to be able to use in a project like as the days consecutive days I'd have to plan out the usage of this if I decided to do something that was uh, wearable I go back and forth on wanting to do a blanket because it would take so many squares and how many cushions can you actually use so yeah I don't know I'll have to see but this is a really nice skein so I'm very happy with that. So, so far, so good. This advent calendar is really fun. So I told you that I was going to share the little bits and bobs that I had gotten with it. It did come with extras. Um, advent calendars usually do. And this one had a bag of candy popcorn. So this is Dinan Gourmet Popcorn in the vanilla corn flavor singles. So... That'll be nice to have. It also came with uh, some loose leaf tea from Tesaurus Tea. This is Long Live the Evil Queens. Um, this says the flavor profile is a toast to the powerful women who are much maligned for going for what they want, no matter what hurdles might stand in their way. Apple and lime create a sweet cup to defeat your little problems. So it's a black tea with apple and lime pieces, corn flour, linden, safflower, blue, blue pea butterfly, and mallow petals, natural organic compliant flavors. So that must mean that this will blue this will brew blue. Um, though black tea blues <laughs> brews brown. So I wonder what color that'll be. I'll definitely give this a try, so that's fun. And there's probably, I would say, four cups worth maybe in here. So that will be interesting. And then I got some stitch markers. So these were from Fan Girl Fibers. Um, there we go. And it's Maleficent and Cruella de Vil. So that's fun. They're like wooden. So yes, very, very happy with those extras. So that's my advent calendar for day two. So let's get into the reading. And then we'll go back around to knitting. Um, I finished Bungo Stray Dogs Volume 1 in the light novels. This is Osamu Dazai's Entrance Exam by Kafka Asagiri, illustrations by Sangu Harukawa. This one does have pictures inside. And so, yes, I took a really long time getting through this. This is only 180 pages. 
This follows um, when Osamu Dazai joins the Armed Detective Agency. So it's like a prequel to the main series. I thought that because this takes place two years prior to the Bungo Stray Dogs manga, that this uh, would be further like away from the beginning of the manga. But actually, this like tells you how or when Dazai joins the Armed Detective Agency. He's given an exam by Kunikita, who is this character here. And this story is mostly from Kunikita's point of view. And that's kind of what made it unenjoyable for me. Um, but going through and, you know, getting into the story was really slow for me. This character right here, Akutagawa, he actually doesn't come in until the end. So that was disappointing for me. <laughs> I don't feel like that's a spoiler because he's not really in the story at all. Like, I don't even know why he's on the cover. He has nothing to do with the case that's ongoing in this story. Um, he comes in more as a tie-in to when the manga series starts. So this volume actually ties into or brings you up to the beginning of the Bungo Stray Dogs manga. So I thought that was really interesting. It's not what I expected. I thought that maybe we'd have one more like volume before um, the beginning of the manga, but this ties in nicely. You can read this without knowing anything about the Bungo Stray Dogs anime or manga. And in the back, there is an afterwards by Kafka Esagiri saying that it was written so that you could read this without having any, like, pre-knowledge of the series. So I thought that was interesting. I enjoyed the case. Once we got to the case, things started picking up a lot. But when we are, like meeting Dazai and Kunikita's like forming his opinions of Dazai that was really slow for me and Kunikita is very sarcastic he also makes some really rude comments like in his head about Dazai and just things in general I don't care for him very much I much prefer Dazai as a character and so I think that's where this kind of went off the rails for me once we start getting into investigating and seeing how Dazai, like, basically saves Kunikita's butt when Kunikita gets himself into situations, uh, because he's not very sociable, um, those were the parts I found interesting. The case was really interesting. I definitely didn't see the culprit until it was revealed, and that was a surprise for me. And yeah, it was just a really enjoyable case. The other stuff, though, wasn't enjoyable for me. And I feel like because this is a prequel, like, story, and we're getting a lot of Kunikita getting to know Dazai and how he works, how his brain thinks, how his um, ability works... And then we also are introduced to how Kunikita's ability works, how he thinks, and all of that. That really slowed everything down for me. Nonetheless, I'm still very interested in this series. I really enjoyed what I've read of the manga series so far, and what I've watched of the anime as well. So I'm really looking forward to more of these light novels in this series, and seeing what kinds of other things come about. I believe there is one where we get like the Port Mafia story and I'm really interested in that. I'm not sure which volume though in the light novels that one is but this was still enjoyable. I gave it four stars in Goodreads but it's going to end up at 3.5 um, just because like I said I'm not a fan of Kunikita and his like thoughts and stuff like that so it was still an enjoyable read. Really enjoyed the case uh, but there was a lot of other stuff that I didn't enjoy. I do still recommend this series though. So 3.5 stars. And then I finished Solo Leveling Volume 3. I listened to this entirely on audiobook. This is by Chu Gong. It's narr narrated by Ki Hong Lee. And um, 
I just really enjoy his narration. This was a much better than the second installment for me. So this is the light novel. Um, the second installment, like I said, was a lot of him just leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. Now in this volume, he's having to deal with like the things that have occurred now that he has leveled up so much. Um, he gets a re like classification uh, test to see if his abilities have changed his rank because he at this point is still an E rank hunter which is like the lowest of the low um, and there is still a bit of him like leveling up but he's putting a lot more thought into what he's doing and uh, there's a lot more use of the abilities he ha now has because he has leveled him up so much. And now his abilities are starting to get noticed by people. Like other high-ranking uh, monster hunters are starting to notice. And there has been like talk of him with the other like agencies or groups of monster hunters. Because there are like kind of like guilds I would say. Of monster hunters and they're all kind of equally balanced but now that there's rumor of Jin Woo Sung um, things might change he could be the one to tip the scales in favor of one group or another um, there's also some interesting things going on with a disease that's around that's kind of related to these dungeons that have started popping up so that's been really interesting and so yes I'm much happier with this volume than I was with the second volume um things are starting to get really interesting and seeing how Jinwoo's brain is working and how he decides to cash in his points or experience things and which areas he decides to increase and how he decides to use his abilities in certain situations is really interesting and entertaining and the narration very entertaining i highly recommend the audiobooks for this series and so much so that i wanted to jump into the next one right away but if i do that i think there's only one more after that that's out right now and then I'd have to wait until the spring, until the sixth one comes out, I think. And so I just want to savor these volumes. So I am glad that I finished this one. So that's two solo leveling novels that I finished this month. But I think I'm going to hold off a little while until I start the next one. So I ended up giving this one four stars. Really, really enjoyed that one. And I definitely recommend. So because I finished that audiobook I decided to go ahead and jump into The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. So Sandra from Got a Thing for Things has recently announced a read-along for the Wheel of Time series. They're doing two books or they're doing one book every two months and seeing how thick this book is I decided to go ahead and get a head start. One of my library apps had a hold that was reasonable <laughs> for the audiobook of this um, and it's the new audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike who plays Moraine I believe in the um, Amazon adaptation and so I have been rearranging my room and just getting rid of things um, like all of the business clothes that I had because I no longer have to go into the office every day. I'm only there once a week, maybe. Sometimes it's just once a month. And even then, I'm only there for like an hour or two at max. And so I definitely didn't need all the business clothes anymore. So I got rid of most of the business clothes um, and just have been rearranging my my room and things like that and so while I've been doing that I've been listening to audiobooks that's how I finished the solo leveling so fast besides the fact that I found it so interesting so I decided um to put this on hold and it had told me then that it was like 13 day hold well it ended up being released to me in two so I'm like you know what I'm just gonna start it because 
who knows how long it's going to take for me to get through, what, 700 pages? Let me check that real fast. 846 pages? Uh, yeah, so this is definitely <laughs> one that I need an audiobook for. Um, so I've just been listening to this while I rearrange my room. This will probably take me longer than 21 days to get through. Um, high fantasy is a hard one for me. I normally get really confused and it just takes me a really long time to get into the world if there's a lot of world building. So far, um, the beginning part of this was kind of boring for me. It took a while to grab my interest. But I did watch the adaptation already, so I kind of have a little bit of knowledge of how this is going to go. Um, and now we are in the part where I am familiar with. Things that I've seen on screen are occurring, so that has definitely helped keep my interest. I am listening to this on two times speed. Rosamund Pike is doing a great job. I'm enjoying her narration of this. And so far it's okay. I'm enjoying what I've listened to. It hasn't taken me as long as I thought it was going to to get into this. I am currently on chapter 11, I think. Uh, yes, I just hit chapter 11, so that is page 186. So, yes, this was like one day of listening. Yes, one day of listening. So, if I put my mind to it, I'll get to this pretty fast. But like I said, um, the read-along for this book is two months per book, so I don't have to rush. I think what I might want to do, though, is make sure that I keep this in the foreground. Because I think if I push this back, I may like forget things. I might come out of the world and things like that. So, yes! It looks like the Wheel of Time series is going to be one that is going to be in my rotation for a while. I believe there are 14 books in this series and they're all like this big. Um, so far what I've seen of this series I really enjoy so I'm looking forward to seeing what the books are like. I feel like a lot of people know what this series is about but basically this is a high fantasy series or at least what I consider high fantasy in a world where... Um, Certain women have abilities, and every once in a while, there is a man that has these abilities. And history has proven that when the men get these abilities, they tend to go insane. And so anybody who ends up having these abilities are basically hunted down. I kind of feel like that's kind of the thing, or at least found tried to be found before they go insane. Um, and so we basically are following this one guy at this point, and he lives in a town. He's grown up, you know, with the same people around him for a while, and he and his dad get attacked by these, like, creatures. At first they think that it's just him and his dad at their home, but as they try to find help, um, they realize that there have been other places that have been attacked, and it turns out that the creatures were after him. And so, in order to keep his village safe, he ends up going away with a woman named Moraine, who's one of these women that has abilities um, and a couple of his friends end up tagging along. That's at least where I am at. I don't know how much more to say without it being spoilery, but basically Moraine was in the village looking for the next dragon or the next man who has abilities. And I think it's pretty obvious that she thinks that one of these boys is the next dragon and so that's kind of where we're at right now they've already left their town um like i said i have watched the adaptations so i kind of know where this is going but yeah it's interesting um i'm enjoying what i've read so far it's not as interesting as the adaptation 
uh, for me, but it's still keeping my interest, which is saying something because I do tend to have problems with high fantasy um, and it keeping my interest and make, making me want to read more. Right now I'm at that point where I do still want to read more. It's still enjoyable for me, even knowing already what could happen based on the adaptation. Um, I'm still enjoying it. It is slightly different, um, but it's not so different that I'm lost, which is great. And so, yeah, that's where I'm at with this. I intend on continuing with that when I get audiobook time. Um, as you know, I'm still on vacation at the moment, so I'm not having the lunch breaks where I'm listening to audiobook uh, a daily. But when I have time, I am putting some listening time in. I'm still rearranging my room, so there's that. Um, and then I'm also reading Heaven Officials Blessing Volume 1 by MXTX. This is the um, light novel version. I have to read this for my TBR game. I have already hit the 100 page mark, so I'm good as a pass for that. I am on just starting Chapter 4, which is page 103. So we've actually just read um, the scene where the cover is depicting. So I thought that was interesting. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. It's definitely not what I expected. It did take me a little bit to get into this. I was surprised that there was swearing in this. <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, but yeah, based on what is told on the back, I didn't expect what's happening in the story. And so that has been a nice surprise. It is a supernatural like mystery. Some at least that's where I'm at right now. Our um heaven official, I guess that's what he's called. I am hesitant to pronounce this name because there is no pronunciation guide in the back. There is a character guide, but it doesn't have pronunciations so and I don't want to like read the whole thing because it could be spoilers it even says like right here um, the identity of certain characters may be a spoiler so I don't want to do that but um, the very first one here is our main character and there is no <laughs> no pronunciation guide um, it tells you what the name means. Uh, it tells you what his title is and it gives you the characters that are used but there's no pronunciation. Um, so our main character is a prince. I don't know that he's called the heaven official. I don't even know. See that's where I'm getting confused because now we're in a section where he has two like helpers and I think they are heaven officials from two other like gods I think um, the people that they represent are people that have shrines where people can go and uh, worship pay homage to and things like that uh, and I'm not quite sure why those two were sent to help our prince, uh, but basically the prince has ascended three times and he's angered the gods. So each time he's ascended, he's done something that has angered the gods and he's been like sent back down to the mortal realm. And then he goes and ascends again, angers them again, gets sent back down. He ascends a third time. The back says that he's angered the gods and he has been banished to the world below. I don't, I didn't get that. Um, in fact, he has told his little, like, helpers that he fell back down to Earth by choice. So I, I'm very confused. <laughs> but basically, he's going around with these two guys. Uh, right now where we're at, there is a case in the town where several brides-to-be have gone missing on their wedding day. And so he has kind of, he's not really looked for that. He kind of stumbled upon this thing happening and is now investigating. And 
So this whole section here is very interesting to me. Before this, though, it was very difficult for me to get into the story. Like I said, I was confused. I didn't understand what was going on. Things that had happened didn't make sense to what was said on the back of this volume. Um, and one of his helpers that was sent to help him is very rude. He rolls his eyes 10,000 times a day. And it's funny because our prince even, like, makes a comment to this guy about his eye rolling and says, you know, you should really try to stop eye rolling so much. Aim, aim low, you know, like, try to only roll your eyes five times a day. And this guy literally, like, rolls his eyes every 10 seconds, it seems. <laughs> like, at the littlest thing, he will roll his eyes. But he also is very rude. Like, the way that his lines are coming out sounds very rude to me. And I just, I don't understand, like, if this is how he's going to be, why is he helping this guy? Like, it could, it could be that he was assigned there and that he just doesn't enjoy our prince and how he does things. But he's just rude in general. And so I'm not enjoying him. The other guy that's helping is okay. He's much more helpful. Um, and our prince character is interesting as well. But, Yeah. Up until the point where he stumbles upon this mystery about the brides going missing, I was having a very difficult time with this to the point where I wasn't even sure that I wanted to continue. Because I was like, where is this going? This is not interesting to me. This guy is super rude. And I'm just not enjoying it. Um, but now that we're into the mystery portion, I am much more invested Supernatural mysteries are very much my thing. The art style on this is very nice. I'm enjoying the illustrations. So that's our prints right there. And yeah, so I'm interested to see where this is going to go. It almost makes me want to watch the adaptation. It, might, it may even help me with how I felt at the beginning. But I don't think I will try that until I've finished with this. So I am striving to finish this um, before the end of the year, um, but I have made it far enough where it's a pass for my TBR game where I don't need to take a punishment in December. And that is the goal. So I am probably going to put this down tonight and read my one volume of real account because I need to read that for my TBR game and then resume reading Heaven Official's Blessing. But... I'm much happier where I am right now than I am than I was with that book before. So that's everything that I have read. Let me catch you up on some knitting. So I have my daughter's uh, Christmas socks in this Christmas bag from Pineapple Yarn. This bag actually came with my first advent calendar. That is the advent calendar I'm planning on trying to do something with in the month of December. We shall see if that happens. I haven't even like cast on or done a gauge swatch or anything with that. Um, so yeah. So anyway, my daughter decided that she would like a pair of socks in this. So this is Hippo for Christmas from Lolo Did It. This is 2018. Chris, Hippo for Christmas 2018. This is in her plush sock base, which I believe is a... 75.25, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that the everyday sock? Oh, let me try to pull this out. Uh, this is 75.15, okay. 75 Superwash Merino, 15 Nylon, 10% tensile. Uh, it must be her everyday sock. That's 75.25. But yes, I have already made myself a pair of socks in this uh, last year. So these are my leftovers. Typically, um, I do a pair of socks for myself and a pair of socks for either my mom or my daughter with the leftovers. And so she had seen my pair of crunkled socks that I had done for Halloween. So those were the crunkled Ghostbusters. So these are crunkled hippos for Christmas. <laughs> so this is what I've done so far. It's not very much. I haven't knit hardly at all um, since I've been on vacation. I'm doing these on my Addy Flexi Flips 2.25 milliliter millimeter 
Um, my daughter takes a 56 stitch sock. So yeah, that's where we are. I think these are going to be super cute. For the heels and toes, we are going with Cascade Heritage in the Jade colorway. Um, she had decided that she wanted the Shadow Wrap heel. I think we're going to try the Shadow Wrap heel um, from Denise at Earth Tones Girls. She has a tutorial up on her channel on how to do that. So we're going to try that and see. Um, but yes, I think that's going to be super cute. And that is all of the knitting that I have done since I talked to you last. So I did tell you I have a little bit of yarn acquisition. It is actually on the floor right now because I don't have enough room on my table. So let me grab that and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I had seen that Yarn Cafe Creations was doing a Halloween sale and so I decided to, to partake because I did have my eye on one of the things that she was offering in store. So I made a purchase from Yarn Cafe Creations. She recently moved her store from Etsy to her own personal website and so yes what I ordered was this. So this is one of her grande skeins. She offers grande skeins in fingering weight and DK weight. This is a fingering weight grande skein. This is a 400 gram grande skein. So basically with her grande skeins, they are dyed in one go. So there's no need to alternate skeins because it's all dyed together. And I believe the fingering weight skeins are don't have ties in them. So it's just one continuous skein of yarn. Or, yeah, one continuous thread of yarn. Um, so yeah, I got a 400 gram grande skein. I think this will be enough to do a summer sorrel from Woolen Pine. Um, that is what I bought this for. So I'm excited. This is the Gothic Teal colorway. And so my color, and I'm really looking forward to using this. Now there was a little bit of a snafu. So I had ordered this, and when the package came in, this was not inside. So after talking with Christy, who's the owner of Yarn Cafe Creations, she had told me that it was her mistake and for me to keep what she had originally sent me. So thank you so much to Christy because this is a lot of yarn that came by accident. And I will need to find a very special project for this. So when I opened the box of the first shipment, there were four skeins of her hand-dyed fingering weight yarn in the Gothic Smoke colorway which is like a medium gray. This is in her Biscotti sock base, which is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards, 100 grams. Biscotti sock is the same colorway that my, or same um, base that my Grande skein is in. So this is basically this. So I got four skeins of this. And that wasn't all. I also got two skeins of her aloe vera colorway. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up because this is very, very pretty. So you can see that it's like a uh, Kind of like a light tan with a light gray and green and brown. It's just gorgeous. So I got two skeins of this also in her Biscotti sock. So I got six skeins of yarn for free. Um, more than generous for her to have me keep it. And so I need to look for a special project to use these in. I have to believe that the person who had ordered this 
or I should say, I, should, I have to believe that this was somebody else's order and that somebody else had gotten my grande scheme. Um, but I have to believe that the person that ordered this had intended on it to be a color work sweater or a color work something. They do go well together. Um, but I don't know. So yeah, I do really need to find a special project for these skeins. If you have one in mind, please let me know. Um, because I really, really am very thankful for Christy basically donating this yarn to me. Um, it's more than generous and I can't thank her enough. Um, and I definitely recommend Christy's yarn because I have used it in the past and I do really enjoy it. Her and her daughter do the Harry Potter advent calendars and I opted not to get one this year um, just because I had gotten one a couple of years ago, I think. Was it last year? I can't even remember now. My goodness. Um, I think it was last year. <clears throat> I had gotten the Harry Potter advent and it was really, really fun. And yeah. So that is all of the knitting and stuff. Um, Vlogmas is almost upon us. I have lots of plans for December. My manga advent calendar project announcement went up on Monday. So if you're interested in seeing what my reading plans are for December, definitely check that out. My TBR game will go up on Saturday, but there will be some um, exceptions to the rule if I should, should say so myself. Um, I've got lots of plans. So I have the manga advent calendar. I've got... The yarn advent calendar, which will continue through Christmas, I think, if I counted the days correctly. <laughs> and then I have another advent calendar that I will share with you on December 1st. And um, we should be playing that throughout the month as well. That was a little bit of a spoiler, so stay tuned <laughs> for more information on that. Um, other than that, it has been... A day I will tell you it's been a day I didn't get started filming until really late um, my daughter picked up some kind of stomach bug and uh, yeah if you remember what happened to me a few months ago that's basically what happened to her but I don't know what's causing it because everything she ate yesterday I ate I don't think anything was different so I'm fine, but she's not, and she's been in bed pretty much all day, so I didn't start filming until late, and it's just been, yeah. <laughs> so I do still need to film my TBR game, um, and then edit and upload my weekly wax wrap up, so... Yeah, <laughs> as you're seeing this, my vacation is very quickly coming to a close. Um, I think I'm finally like relaxed to the point where I'm not having chest pains. I'm not having any issues like that. I was still having like residual stress health issues, I guess. Stress related health issues. Uh, up until a couple days ago um, but I think now I'm like fully into vacation I'm doing good I've been productive I rearranged my room and so I think this upcoming week I'm gonna focus on knitting getting my advent stuff together gauge swatching my advent knitting project the bakery bears are doing a mystery knit along again this year for patrons I don't know if I want to participate in that yet. I do know what I need to participate in, um, on it. Uh, and I have those things, but I haven't pulled them because I have a sneaking suspicion that it's a cowl. And I don't use cowls. So... She had done a cowl a couple years ago, and I haven't even finished that. I may just rip it out and redo that design into a sock. I think that would be easier for me, 
but I might have a little bit of an issue with the stitch counts and everything. Uh, we shall see. That might be a project for another day, maybe a New Year's project. Um, but I do want to gauge swatch my advent sweater that I'm planning on using my first advent calendar for and uh, working on my daughter's crunkled socks and just making sure everything is in line for the start of vlogmas like i said vlogmas is not going to be much different from what you've been seeing from me in my desus 19 diaries for most of this year um it'll just be one weekly video but you'll have more clips so you'll see a knitting advent calendar um opening you'll see every other day a manga advent calendar opening um uh, you'll see the other advent calendar i think daily and then on the Saturday of that week, I will do my manga reviews. I will show you what I've knit on if I haven't talked about it earlier in the week and things like that. So the Vlogmas video entries are probably more like an hour long, um, if not an hour and a half, just because there's so much content uh, to share with you during the week and I don't separate those out into daily videos because that's just too much for me. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> Especially with uh, December being my busiest time of month um, as far as my occupation goes. So yeah, lots of things to look forward to. By the time you see this, I think it'll be the end of November. So I hope you all have an amazing rest of your month. Let me know uh, down in the comments below if you have any big plans for the month of December. Any big reading plans? Are you participating in any readathons? Are you doing anything special uh, during the month? Or do you have any traditions for December? I'd really love to know. If nothing else, you'd just like to let me know that you are here. If you could leave me a... Is there a yarn ball emoji? Down in the comments below for all of my new acquisitions and my yarny projects. That would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that would do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smiley always. Bye.